Holy cow. <laughs> it's a good I, crowd. Honestly, I can say that when I do this talk, it, I do a similar talk at Flock. I get six people and they're the usual suspects. Uh, I want to say thank you all for coming to this talk. <laughs> can you not hear me? I apologize. Do you hear me now? Yes. Okay, we will now keep to this tone for the rest of the meeting. So <laughs> people in the front office are now deaf. I am sorry. I will need water. It'll be better when we close the door. All right. This is a this is about a 24 slide thing. However, uh, the first couple slides are just. Um, Uh, uh, sorry. We still have a few minutes left, but you know, okay. I think we can start because the room is full, cool, so we are probably allowing more people. To All right. Well, then I, I'll, I'll go over the quick part fast, and then people who are coming in, setting up. Um, this is a talk uh, on the future of Apple. Uh, we have a new function of Apple coming in because uh, RHEL 8 is going to be coming out in the next eh, months, <laughs> uh, years, soon. Um, my name is Steven Smogin. Uh This is Kevin Fenzi. Hello. <clears throat> Uh, today's topics, we'll be going over um, sort of a history of Apple in uh, five slides, uh, where we are going, and then I would like to have a good portion of the meeting towards talk with us. So if I, if 20 minutes, you have 20 minutes? Uh, I think it's 50 minutes. I know it's 50, but at 20 minutes before the, uh, yeah, kick me. Okay. okay. Apple in five slides. <laughs> uh, okay, this is the presenters. Kevin Finzi is a rock star systems administrator. <laughs> uh, he also roadies for Rush. Uh, I've been stuck here on this planet for quite a while. I'm trying to get off, but well, uh, what can you do? Uh, we have a, a hired uh, heckler, uh, just to keep me honest. Um, if there is any time I am not honest and he doesn't catch me, anyone in the audience can catch me also. <laughs> okay, Apple is a set of packages that are branched off of Fedora. It has a really bad name called Apple because the fact is being all system administrators, we had a very hard time coming up with a naming scheme. And so the first naming scheme of what it was after about six months of arguing over the other naming schemes, we just stuck to it. Everyone else knew about Apple versus uh, the next gen or the future. Um, we normally do packages that people want on rail, but well, for various reasons, Red Hat would not want to support because, well, it's going to be very expensive to deal with NGINX and six other different HTTP servers. Um, we started a while ago, and uh, our normal path is we take from Fedora of the release that RHEL was based off of. We, Well, these days it would be a branch, but originally it was sort of like a CVS fork of those packages. We branch them into Apple uh, branches, and then we rebuild them in the Fedora Koji servers. Currently, we, we, we started off with RHEL 5, well, RHEL 4. RHEL 5 was our main starting point, and then we did uh, RHEL 6 and 7, or our current, current name ones. Who uses Apple? I hope many of you use Apple. <laughs> you can all raise your hand if you use Apple daily or if you use it with some system that you're dealing with. Uh, we branch everything. Um, 
Fedora would not be built without Apple. That is actually one of the reasons Apple was started inside of Fedora is we had a ton of packages we needed to build the entire, our own rep infrastructure with that we needed to be stable-ish versus uh, rolling it out just as we were about to turn it off. Um, and it's, we mostly are, most of the community members who are focused on Apple are more towards the slower paced uh, wanting to get it into a long scale production system. Which leads us to our next graph. Uh, the lower la levels here are your Fedora users over time. Each of these, as you can see, they branch down and they slowly die off. Branch down, slowly die off. This is the Apple curve. Down here is Apple 5. It's still going slowly off. Apple 6 was kind of slowing down for a bit and then it's all of a sudden started picking off again because people are finally realizing that Red Hat is not turning on Apple 5 or Rel 5 releases again. <laughs> there was a chance. There was a chance. There might have been another one. Uh, so they're going, those boxes are getting to six. Seven is picking up here. When looking at sort of site data. Sorry, sorry. I'm curious. What's the dark blue that appears after Apple 5? Dark blue? Fedora Future, that's Rawhide. So it's a little bit here. Rawhide actually was used quite a lot back here, then it kind of went away, and then it kind of, it's just at the very top here. It doesn't really show up enough in my picture to be, because the red, white. Um, so yeah, each of these are different sort of eras of Fedora usage. Um, anyway. Uh, it's used quite a lot, and it's continuing to grow, and I'm expecting that when 8 comes out, there will be a, yet another, <coughs> and 6 will start doing this sort of 20-year drop. Uh, <coughs> one, one thing to note from the last slide, uh, just to mention, very recently, Apple 7 passed Apple 6. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that might be worth uh, mentioning. This is a this is a wait, I'm not a weighted. This is stacked a stacked graph. In if these were separate ones, Apple Seven has, has finally after five years reached the number of users that are in, and it was almost a race where it didn't because of this jump up. If this had still gone down, it would have happened in. I was thinking it was going to happen about here in uh, January. But also, a whole bunch of Rail 6 systems came online using Apple, and Apple 7 had to do a little bit more to get there. <laughs> but it's finally more users' uh, systems out there, there. Now, this doesn't mean that we know that this is not every system, and the, there's a, a low weight on this. If there's a whole bunch of systems behind a firewall, they're still counted as one. So this is sort of the minimum size of these communities, not the actual size or a guess of the maximum size. <clears throat> so who makes uh, Apple happen? Uh, Apple's run by volunteers, uh, both from CentOS and Fedora communities. Um, the build system is Fedora Koji, uh, and this is really just sort of a, a historical accident because that's that what's what was there that's what uh, what we had and um, at this point you know if you were designing things logically i don't know how many of you were here for the last talk the penrose uh, uh, discussion but uh, right now everything kind of flows very strangely if, if you thought of it logically you might think that add-on packages would be something on top of centos rather than on top of <coughs> rel in fedora so it's all sort of what we had at the time and historical uh, uh basis uh there's a steering committee uh that has uh, five to seven people from the various communities on it uh make decisions about uh overriding guidelines coming up with uh 
uh, how things will be done, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, the release engineering and things like that are kind of done as a ad hoc thing uh, when, as people have time. So there's no employed people who work on Apple. Apple is just a side gig for people who do Fedora release engineering and CentOS uh, community work and CentOS build system and things like that. So uh, it's really kind of amazing how well we've done with the resources that we have. Uh, all right, so where are we going? Um, there's obviously lots of things to discuss, especially uh, with regards to new RHEL, but uh, let's start out with complaints and issues that we've had uh, kind of for the existence of Apple. Um, one of the problems we run into is that uh, RHEL supports things for a very, 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 very long time. And when you're a package maintainer and you say, oh, sure, I'll maintain my package for Apple, it'll be great. And then five years pass and you're like, well, I don't want to do that anymore. Or this package is now not working anymore. Or I, I don't want to commit to the fact that I'm going to be maintaining this thing for the rest of my life. So we've run into that problem. Um, we've run into the problem of not keeping old packages around. Uh, occasionally there will be problems and people will be like, oh no, the new update of this package broke a bunch of things, you know, and in the meantime, before it gets fixed, we'd just like to roll back to the previous one, which was working fairly well. And of course, there's ways to do this. The Fedora Koji keeps all the old builds around, uh, but it's not convenient. It's, it's uh, something that people have to go in and hunt down the package, figure out what, what's what, download it themselves manually, downgrade it, etc. cetera. Uh, so we've run into that. Um, we've run into the divergence problem from Fedora. So we're taking Fedora packaging components, specs and sources and so forth, building them against RHEL. And at the start of the cycle, that's great. They're sort of in sync. That's, it's the version that, that works with those libraries and that package set. Uh, but as time goes on, things diverge. So the Fedora version will bump, you know, 20 versions but you don't want to do that to the uh, Apple version. You want to keep a, a, an older stable one. And then there's new macros in the Fedora side that cause it not to build on the rel. And you, you run into a, a version skew uh, problem there. Uh, we uh, also run into the problem for our CentOS users. Uh, when a new rel version comes out, there's a lag between when that version is released by Red Hat and released by Cent the CentOS version. If we move along and pull, pull in that new RHEL version and build stuff against it, then the CentOS users might not have compatibility against that. So we run into that sort of version skew problem there as well for, for short periods of time. Um, and then there's, there's other issues that we've run into over time uh, as well. Uh, anybody have one that isn't up here? Problems you've run into? Issues? Or does that cover most of them? Yeah. There's 32 bit user space in RHEL and yep. but not in Apple. Yep, that's another one uh, that we didn't have up here uh, is architecture support. Um, so there's a certain, uh, certain architecture supported in RHEL, certain ones that are only in CentOS. We build against RHEL, so we run into problems trying to build against those secondary architectures uh, with Fedora Koji. So, yep. <coughs> so here's a, a little reminder for our Apple 6 users. Even though Apple 7 just barely passed Apple 6, uh, EL6 is going to end of life or at least uh, high maintenance or whatever uh, the term is. Uh, in 2020. So we're just not going to do much to EL6. There's, it's going to be basically the way it is now and just keep puttering along until, until the end of life. So for seven, um, we've been talking a long time about uh, doing, uh, changing a little bit of the procedure we use for when new releases come out. Uh, right now, uh, each Apple repository is just that collection of Apple packages that gets created each time we push out new updates. 
Um, but we're talking about maybe moving to a, a system where we have a base repository, which is created at the time of that release, and then have an updates repository on top of that. What this would give us is the ability to actually downgrade packages again, because there will be a package that's in the base repository uh, when the release first came out. It'll also give us the ability to uh, have people to uh, CentOS users could point to the previous release until the new uh, CentOS release comes out. So they could not run into this incompatibility with the new releases. Uh, it's a little bit more work, but uh, we're looking at uh, uh, probably doing that uh, to save some of these problems. I made a mistake on the slide. It's everything, I forgot to change that everything stays static was an everything path. It should be say stuff stays static, not ah, yes, everything. Right, yep, yep. Um, so this also would give us an ability to archive old releases. So if right now Apple doesn't support any of the older uh, point releases. So if you have a uh, RHEL 6.8 box and for whatever reason you never want to update to 6.11, uh, it's too bad, Apple only supports 6.11. But if we move to this uh, scheme, although it won't help Apple 6, but uh, for 7, if we move to the scheme, you can actually continue to point at the archive version. You won't get updates, but you'll at least have those still have those packages. Uh, let's see. Let's it on there. You're up. Okay, now comes the meat of this argument. <laughs> uh, the Apple 8 beta came out this November, October, and there is no Apple, or sorry, EL8, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 came out in November. November. Um, there is no Apple 8 yet, and there's been a lot of people wondering, when is Apple 8 coming out? Uh, Apple 8 has been delayed because we've got to work out a lot of different things. Uh, Apple is not built the same way as Fedora is. The Koji system takes, has to know, has to have sort of built a package to know about the package, to use it. And we didn't build any of the rail packages. And so we cheat by having Koji look at an outside repository. That gives you enough information for how we've done things with RHEL 6, 5, 6, and 7. But it doesn't work well with modules because uh, there are times where modules may need things that we don't know exactly through an outside repository without extra work and without extra logic that we needed to do. Um, there are that means we have to, we're gonna have to break a lot of things. And as somebody said recently, I, I was in a meeting, it's better to break everything and have everybody scream at you at once <laughs> than break it in small bits over time and they go away because they're tired of dealing with all your death of a thousand cuts. So this is a good time to break everything. And uh, we're trying to come up with all the things we could break in one time to get it done. Uh, our current pathway looking forward to try and get an Apple 8 out is we will not be building modules for Apple 8 beta. The beta Apple will be on a different path so that people aren't, you know, it'll have a different path so that we can work through all the different changes we want and we're not affecting the main Apple. It'll be pub alt <coughs> Apple versus pub Apple. Once we get to 8 general release, or whatever it's called, GA, GR, GQ, uh, we will go with putting it in uh, the regular pathway. Uh, it's a beta for on our part as much as it's a beta for anything else, but it will be there, I'm hoping, by March. It will have packages that are non-modular, and we may be able to, uh, we will work our butts off to try and get modular in there as when we can. EL8, again, comes with modules. So we were gonna have to put in later rules to deal with all this. Uh, if you want to replace a rail package, currently in Apple, we don't allow that. If, if Red Hat ships a broken AWS CLI, 
if Apple take if Rail takes Ansible inside, and then sit sell, and then takes it in, <laughs> out. Uh, just for example, <laughs> not 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 that thing was picked purely as a random one because it's an A. I'm not even sure it's a real word. No, no. Um, You'll be able to replace it with a module, and a module stream that'll have a naming scheme that will make sure that we don't replace the rel at Ansible, but we'll be able to have, you'll have your module of Ansible, and it will put the packages in there, and it will know not to, you won't get broken-ish. Um, again, if you want to support multiple versions of something, you will have to use a module. Uh, modules do not give you parallel installability, they give you parallel availability. If you want parallel installability, there's a lovely project called SCL, and I would love you to support them. Um, if you want, and to deal with the other programmer problem, packager problem of, oh God, I don't want, I want to upgrade this to something that's supportable, please. Uh, you can put a lifetime now as a policy in on your module. We, there's a thing called the product PDC FPDC FPDC Fedora Project Definition Center or some other an acronym that fits those letters. <laughs> um, you'll be able to put a policy. I want this to be released supported for this one release, and then at the next release you can pull it out. I don't care. I'm not good. I may say I want it back in, but if I don't want to support it anymore, I'm taking it out. And because we'll be using a path system, uh, well, that's two slides. Yeah. Sorry, uh, you will be able. To, I got my slides mixed up. Paths were supposed to be here. Okay, um, I had to rewrite most several of these slides this morning because we came to several agreements of what we were going to do with Apple 8 this morning. <laughs> um, packages in EL8 are shipped through two channels and a third channel that is not a two-channel system. <laughs> um, the base OS are packages that will not majorly change. This is how it was explained to me because I'm a two-year-old. So I may not have the exact right definitions, and somebody who actually knows them, like Josh or Mike back there, who's not there, uh, can tell me. AppStream are things that are more likely to add and remove over a path time. There's going to be some sort of cadence that they will upgrade things and change things and fix things and make things and go faster. Um, and then there's a bunch of stuff that you might need to build stuff, but most users of a package don't need and having it in there always ends up with well I installed this and it's I'm pretty sure this broke my system sir you have a grub problem no I'm pretty sure that GCC <laughs> devel has broken my system um, those sort of issues that support has to deal with the putting it in a channel that's not by default where it's going to be a unless you really needed it that's what the code ready Linux builder is and I missed one. Again, I was supposed to put this as an acronym. Uh, we will build all Apple packages against these channels. They will all be in a, some similar way uh, to be decided as we learn this, but that's what we'll be building against. Okay. I'm saying this because there are some other channels that are in RHEL. There are, what, what do we call those? Like HA, high availability. and add-ons. We will not be building against those. We are only going to be building against these three. If it's in an add-on, we can replace it you know, in the old-fashioned way that we're doing stuff. Uh, one of the big problems, other big problems is, well, which add-ons is, is Apple building against? Oh, we're building against this, this, and this. Okay, we didn't know that. Please take it out. Well, we've been building against it for six years. <laughs> we're going to start off with just three things. If somebody finally says, oh, we really want you to build against it from now on, we'll add it in, but only after they have signed in blood. I... All right. 
the paths we showed in the earlier with seven, you might have noticed that there was this slash stuff. Suck in there that didn't make any sense. The stuff is going to be here because in Fedora we call it everything, but people said it's not everything anymore because we have modules. So I came up with the replacement, which is stuff. We have stuff. <laughs> we have modules. If it's not a module, it's stuff. <laughs> Those packages will be called stuff things. Um, anyway, uh, we, the pathways will allow things to be, and it'll be again as Kevin went on, it will allow us to go through and do both archiving, regular archiving, uh, regular building outs of things and have a two-channel system for backups and pull-outs and pull-ins. Um, we will rotate these at regular intervals to be decided because we don't know what rel 8's rotation cycle is. If, rotate, if rel decided it was going to rotate every month, we couldn't keep up with that because we're all volunteers. There's nobody here who's going to have a full-time job of, okay, I'm updating things. If it's a six-month cycle, we may do that. But it'll be some cycle that we can keep up with as volunteers. Um, anyway, any other proposals from the audience that, we, that Brian can catch down? He's, he's got something to do since he hasn't heckled me yet. <laughs> All right. We have a lot of questions. We know we have a lot of questions about how late it's going to happen. I'm not sure that's a big enough number for the number of questions we have. Uh, we think we know how it's going, some of these things are going, but we haven't run it yet. So it's, and it's not that we're a special case, and it's not a statement about modules and thing. The way we build things has been always a special case, and so we are making things harder for ourselves because we can't do certain things. Um, What's MBS? Oh, um, modular mo service. field service. It's sort of a thing that sits next to Koji or on top of Koji yeah, and sure. whips Koji into doing what it wants to do. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Um, <clears throat> what modules in Apple can be default. So again, we, some of these are policy and some of these are, we're gonna do it in this, in this uh, alt area. We're gonna find out it breaks. We'll figure out why it breaks. And then we'll go, okay, how can we make it not break? But we, would, we won't break regular Apple while we're doing this. That's the main thing I wanna do. Because if you're already on Apple 6 and you have, or Apple 7 and you have stuff that you need doing, you don't want us futzing with your stuff while we're trying to fix something else. Again, directory layout changes we think we have, but it's a proposal. Somebody might say, oh, that's going to cause this problem, and I need to really fix that. Okay. Uh, compose changes. Again, currently what happens is every night, Apple is not. So when you look at Fedora, you see an 80. You see pub, Linux, releases, 829 slash and all that is composed once and stuck on the, the mirrors. Because that's how, and then updates gets composed every night and new stuff gets pulled in. Apple is like rawhide. Every night it gets composed and a new thing put out. So that means that it's rolling and stuff comes in and comes out and sometimes it doesn't happen at all because something else broke but it there's no it that's sort of the way we've done it because it was a quick hack and we've done it now for 10 years <laughs> so um, so we there are going to be composed changes to make it so that we have this once a semester I don't call it a semester semesters can be any length of time. Um, <laughs> my son has, has now had a semester, a fall semester that will be longer than his spring semester, so yes. Uh, compose changes. Can Fedora modules get auto-composed when a commit happens? How will we deal with this? How will we deal with new modules and dead modules and modules that 
have come in in the middle of a stream and the combinatorical number of module interactions that can happen because you can have module A, stream B, compile module B, stream A, compile module C, stream Z. And they all have to know each other. And, but some of that we don't know because it's done from somewhere else. There were a lot more questions, but I knew I had a very short time to get this thing done, so I wanted to make sure that you guys had a lot of time to talk to us. There were about six slides I deleted here, <laughs> and a trash fire, and a really cool image that Matt, Mike had given of a, a tornado, fire tornado. <laughs> All right, jumping to the last of the set, which you can't really do, but we'll do anyway. This is a computer and this is not a number. What do you think? What are your plan? What are your wishes for REL Apple 8 to meet your needs? Because we need your input and your help because we are done as, like I said, we're volunteers. Most of the people who work on this are Fedora, well, it started off with mostly Fedora people, and now it's mostly CentOS people who come and help us do stuff. Um, my primary job is anything but Apple. Uh, although, I, so we need your input to know when I, I'm not going down a rabbit hole thinking that I'm helping you and I'm really not helping you. That makes sense. You, sir? So, with the combining, in theory, of SunDOS and Fedora, like SpecBus and stuff, which probably just gets this, whatever, um, uh, it becomes easier to contribute to that ecosystem. For Apple, um, Apple's also always kind of been off in its own corner. Is there, uh, as part of this, uh, I plan to bring sort of like Apple spec files and Apple uh, patch files and whatever into a common place that makes it easier to like just submit it. The moment it's hard. So Apple packages are going to be in the same spot as all those. Apple specs are still in that same spot. They're just, so what will happen is, because they didn't show this on here, so I will try and mime this out. <laughs> Kevin, stand here. No, no, right here. Sure. Kevin, there is a, there is a pack, in the Git, there is Kevin. <laughs> Under Kevin, there are several branches. Blow your hand up. Oh. This is Fedora Rawhide. This is Fedora 30. This is Fedora 29. Sure. This is 27, blah, 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 blah. Apple 7, yeah. EL6. And then there will be on this hand, same Kevin, C6, C7, C8. And potentially 5 or uh, <clears throat> Stable or whatever you want to call the stream branch for the thing is for the module, which could be built for Fedora, CentOS, uh, Apple, everything. So what you would do is you would go into uh, source.fedoraproject.org or source.centos.org or whatever the name it will be. You will do a git clone after you've um, or done a, uh, what is it? Do a fork and do a, a fork, and then and PR PR it back, and then the PR will go in. The person who's maintaining it can then go, yes, where it needs work. You know the usual BS. And then that's how those things will be done. So if you want to fix an Apple package, you will fork the Apple. You'll fork Kevin <laughs> to <laughs> Steve. Stephen will then have all of those branches. You will make the thing, and then you'll do a PR, and then Kevin will accept it or not onto the right branch. Does that sound other than? Just, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, Son, what do you want? I want string branches to be used to solve the government problems where how do we overwrite rel content, or can we not? Or it's in rel. No, it's not. No, it's in. No, it's not. We don't care. Extensively, we wouldn't have that problem anymore because you can have real content in one 
stream, and that will jump into another stream, and it, it really is ambiguous. And customers and, and users can choose which stream they want to follow. Yep. So the question was a very long statement about wanting stream branches to do everything. So the question is, what do you want? I'm giving you the answer. Yeah, okay. The answer was, uh, yes, yeah, sorry. The question was, what do you want? The answer is, I want stream branches to be able to have lots of branches so that I can pull stuff into RHEL or out of RHEL, and it, a person can build against the stream branch and have the solution that they need whether it is supported by Red Hat or not. Certain things will be supported by Red Hat and will have been signed by Red Hat so they'll know it's supported and then certain things won't. And the other big thing that stream branches give is, is the uh, timeline, support timeline issue. Because we have lots of people who are like, um, they get a request, hey, support, uh, for, uh, create a branch of your package for Apple. And they say, no, I don't support Apple because I don't want to be here for 10 years running this thing. Whereas if we have a stream branch, we tell them, okay, just do a stream branch and put whatever you're willing to support. You know, if your upstream is only going to have this thing for two years, you could say two years and then I'm out. So one of the other proposals that I didn't put up here and I took off the slide uh, came up because I didn't want to be thrown out of the room or, and burnt at a stake afterwards was Apple 8 will all be modules. Nothing but modules in Apple 8. Because it solves all the problems by creating new ones. Um, I mean, everything is a problem. You just have to find the next solution. Um, the problem was that we don't have a lot of things as modules. OpenVPN is not currently a module. Um, Clam AV is not currently a module. And that's a lot of extra work to put on to packagers who may not be interested in going down modular path at this time. Uh, also, it put a lot of work on us trying to convince them that we needed to do it that way. And that would be a very easy no. Uh, and I, for them. There, there's also a lot of stuff that's in uh, Apple 6 and 7 now that are like really small add-on packages. So they're like, you know, PHP, blah, 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 and it's one library that does one niche thing. And it seems to me like we'll have a lot of difficulty getting maintainers to say, oh, I'll build a module for this one little tiny, teeny, tiny thing, whereas building it as a traditional package is makes more sense. But I think it gets back to also how difficult is it to make a module, how difficult is it to maintain a module, and maybe at some point down the road, we make that easier to the point where those people are satisfied to do a module for that kind of thing. So I, I guess the goal could be Apple 8.9 is all modular. Picking a number that I'm not going to stick to. <laughs> because Apple is not supported. Mike. Kevin, you mentioned something, and this might be worth, this is a policy that we haven't really talked about, but probably could. So you said, hey, maybe, hey, maintainer, come do this, do this module for three years, and then, you know, that way you know it forever. But there's a very, very, very strong preference that at the end of those three years, they can be updated version of the module come out. So right. it's not such that if you start using that in three years, you're just out of luck and you have this unmaintained True. thing. It's, if you use this in three years and running an update, you'll see, Oh, well, now, now I need to move to the new version, say, three years ago. Yep. That's something that we should probably talk about more because it's relevant. It's very relevant to Apple. Yeah, there's a lot of upstreams that behave that way that are like, here's our, our current thing, and we're planning to you know, totally redo it. So if you are able to get those plans or know those plans, you can set the, the lives appropriately and provide some kind of upgrade path to where the you know, get the next stream, or at least it, they know that there's another stream of the next thing. Yeah. Uh, another proposal that was on the table, which comes up, is that, uh, but it was, I, it is a lot of work on our part, is that at every, those dot releases, when RHEL comes out, we tell the maintainers at that point they can pull stuff in or out. 
we're, we're gonna unofficially do that if you're a maintainer and you've got something really old and you're like, when six dot whatever the next one is comes out, if there's stuff you want, or no, we're not doing it to six. <laughs> when seven dot seven starts coming out, we're gonna let the maintainers know that A, if you need to update or you need to do stuff, we're gonna make a fast track process, do this, send this email out, say that you're gonna do it, and then when we branch to 7.7, seven, you can go do that. And we'll, we'll pull that in, and then you'll have the 7.6 tree there, which has all the old stuff. If you need that old stuff, you got it. 7.7 seven will have the new stuff. So I'm hoping as, I'm hoping most of you guys are ops people, whatever that cool word is these days. Um, sysadmins, uh, are you at a question or was yeah, it? I'm yeah. oh, okay. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. I asked for raised hands and then I didn't. So I'm hoping you're mostly this because I'm trying to make it so that your jobs are not broken. The last thing you need is October 31st, you've gone to the beer fest, that because it's the last day of October fest or whatever the last day of October fest is, and your pager is melting in your pocket because Apple just upgraded a bunch of stuff and you weren't ready for it. But on the other hand, for the ops people in the room, I also want to make it so that you're not spending the next 8 to 2024 worrying about your RHEL 7 package without being able to move forward in a way that you have a way to do so. Yes, sir? Yes, sir. Just to put those people on those, some of the options that we have here, you're talking about how to do modules. This is something that we can do incrementally over time. I think there's a, there's a real barrier to entry with modules. It's scaling new stuff that people are not familiar with. Once it's actually out, people are using it in practice and have familiarity with it, and that barrier gets lower. As the tools mature, the barrier gets lower. And people try it in one place and want to do it somewhere else. And you get the invest. The return on that investment by more powerful and better choices over time, easier maintenance. I, I'm, that's, my pla that's my plan for this. The yeah. problem, and the reason why I'm trying to set expectations in this room, is that in the past, whatever came out on EL6 first day we did this, we in infrastructure have only had enough cycles and such to do that till now, yeah. till 2020, 1120 and we're going to move to an incremental improvement structure. Right. Uh, so the thing, the, the point that I really want to make is you don't actually have to do all of that at the GA release of a, of a major, major version. If in four years' time, the community comes out with Python 4, and we want to move everything to Python 4, you can add that as a module without impacting anybody who's not even made the existing <coughs> Right. If you want to deprecate something, you're talking about having these cycles where you can add new things. You can simply stop maintaining the old thing, add the new thing as a module. The developers aren't impacted because the, the main languages are not affected. The users are not, are not impacted because they get to choose when to opt into the module. Yep. And as long as they don't do that, they stay on the old. So you actually have a lot more options for moving to these models bit by bit when it starts you, rather than having to make these decisions up front. So actually, you're not necessarily missing how if you're not completely modular and dot zero. You can do that over time, and the tools you've got are fine. Right, yes. Sorry, 10 minutes. Um, we will, uh, so yes, let's, like I said, modules solve a lot of problems, and us moving to modules in a <coughs> incremental, as we fix things and get things going, way which should help you solve your user problems better without having to use a hammer. Uh, but it will, we won't be able to have everything on the first day and it may be slow. That's, that's fine. Yeah. Yes, sir? Uh, so that they can pick their version. 
version of Python, they can fix their version of, of say, uh, KD Plasma, or they can fix their version of GNOME. And uh, I'm not worried that uh, uh, if, if people mix and match random versions of everything, that uh, there can be any conflict all over the place. I mean, like in the old days of RPM here. Uh, so yes, I am. I that there are ways this you could have that happen, and that I'm going to expect to be the as you said the new RPM hell. It'll be the, some other thing. We will have to figure that out. We'll have to figure that out because the the issue is is currently the solution everyone is going to is not using packaging at all and just dumping a tarball on a, a bunch of. Uh, disk drives. People have gone back to that. I have run into so many systems where I couldn't get it in Apple because the Apple version was too old. So I just, well, I kept the package on Apple because I didn't want to do this, but I just did a tarball over the other stuff and it's broken uh, because now I have two different versions running on the same system. Um, we're going to run through that. It's going to happen. We'll have to solve it as we go. It is not and it may be unsolvable. There are problems that are unsolvable. We all live with that. We're sysadmins. We have users. Um, we'll work with it as best we can. Uh, and the only comment I would say is talk to the modularity people. We've, had, we've talked a lot about this. Modularity is a tool that you're absolutely right. It can be perfect. It can let you shoot yourself in the foot if you use it wrong. So on top of the tool, you still need decent policy to be able to do it right. Just the way that RPM dependencies can be used wrong, you still need the packaging guidelines to do it right. And as long as you do it right, use it for your advantage and don't let yourself get into the messy corner. Peter's sitting up there. Peter, sit, stand up and let everybody see you. You go ahead. <laughs> cross, cross your arms are real menacing. You got a problem with modules or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to stand up, but here I am, so if you need to. So, so I want to mention one other uh, quick thing about modules that uh, might be a big win uh, for the EL side of things in that, say, <coughs> say um, uh, Python 5 comes out or something like that, and uh, some Apple maintainer makes a, a package or a module of it, builds it up, and it's really popular, and people start using it. And then say maybe uh, it's something that uh, is desired for support. So it maybe gets pulled in and there's a module that comes out in a later uh, YEL release that's a Python 5 or whatever. Uh, having the ability to see what things are succeeding and popular in Apple may be a means for determining what things are worth supporting commercially or putting more resources behind you know, down the road. So. Or maybe a it, win in that direction. Uh, Go ahead. Thank you. Yes, sir. We got two minutes. Sorry. Can I track what packages are most popular? Yes. No. <laughs> uh, no, no. What? what well, by popularity. What how support would know is support would get a lot of things saying, "Hey, I'm getting this from Apple. You're a Red Hat a customer. You got you you have a way with RHN to yep. get that. We do not have a way of knowing this. Yep. Uh, all I know is this IP address asked for this repository. Everything else is just best guesses. Right." Uh, any other questions? Yes, sir. So, okay. Uh, our pressure on the builders? Mirrors. Uh, I'm archiving off stuff, and nobody mirrors archive. So, uh, very few people mirror archive. So, only those mirrors that are archiving the old. So 7.6 will be here. 7.7 .7 will be out. 7 .6, when 7.8 comes out, 7.6 will move off to archives. Uh, so the disk space will just be a little bit more, but it should not be greatly more than what it is. 
And if it turns out that it is turning into greatly more, then we will work out some other solution because the mirrors are the hidden lifeline on here that I didn't put up here, which is there are packagers in Apple, there are CentOS ops who do the other stuff, and then there's this whole big room of people who aren't in here who run mirrors that you get your packages from. Uh, they do it all, mostly off their own time. They, they are not paid by it. They're usually, they're a university and they just have free bandwidth and they've, they haven't told their boss that they're using it for this. <laughs> so uh, if you run into a mirror manager somewhere or somebody's running a mirror, thank them, buy them a the lunch someday. And anyway, I think that's about it for us up here. If you don't have any more talks, I will let you out early so you can get to the coffee place before anyone else. <laughs> <laughs>